Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras here with the latest news from Israel. Graphic video footage has emerged showing soldiers dragging a wounded youth's bullet-ridden body to their vehicle with his head banging on the ground. He later died of his wounds. The IDF spokesman's office said the teen was evacuated hastily though because the soldiers were being pelted with stones. The incident, which the army said would be investigated fully, occurred on Monday when border police shot 17-year-old Kusay al Imul during clashes in the West Bank village of Tuku near Bethlehem. According to the Palestinian Red Crescent, Imul was hit by four bullets in his upper body and two in the legs. Four other Palestinians were wounded. The IDF said the teen had thrown stones at the Israelis, who responded by firing Ruger rifles. The army's initial inquiry found that the soldiers seen in the footage had come to evacuate Imul, but because they were being pelted by stones, the soldiers decided to take the Palestinian to their vehicle before giving him first aid. Haredi demonstrators protested in Jerusalem and Beit Shemesh late Tuesday night during a third day of protests over the recent arrest of several young Haredi women for failure to respond to draft orders. Seven protesters were arrested for disrupting the peace three in Jerusalem and four in Beit Shemesh. Organized by the anti-Zionist Neturei Karta movement, the protests were held in Mea She'arim in Jerusalem and Nahar Hayarden Street in Beit Shemesh. Demonstrators blocked streets both in Beit Shemesh and around Kikar Shabbat near Mea She'arim in the capital. Protesters in Jerusalem also set a number of dumpsters on fire. A police spokesperson said a number of demonstrators in Beit Shemesh attacked police. One man was slightly injured after he was hit while standing on a light rail track close to Shivtei Israel Street in the capital, trying to force a train to stop. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley told senators reviewing her nomination for U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. that she would hold the world body accountable for its treatment of Israel. Haley devoted a substantial amount of her remarks to the need to protect Israel from condemnation by U.N. member states. During her testimony before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Haley called the U.N.'s passage of Resolution 2334 last month that called the Western Wall occupied territory a, quote, terrible mistake, and said such actions cannot continue. She said she would not go to New York and abstain when the UN seeks to create an international environment that encourages boycotts of Israel. Said Haley, quote, In fact, I pledge to you this, I will never abstain when the UN takes any action that comes in direct conflict with the interests and values of the United States, end quote. A fight over Israel's choice of ambassador to Brazil has been raging on for more than a year and a half. Officials in Brasilia say they reject the credentials of Israel's candidate Dani Dayan because he lives in Judea and Samaria, and used to represent the Jewish communities there. The decision has been severely straining bilateral ties, but now the standoff is ending. Dayan's going to become Israel's consul general in New York instead, and Brazil just announced its acceptance of his replacement, Yossi Shelley. But even that appointment isn't exactly trouble-free. Shelley not only lacks diplomatic experience, but he was convicted for fraud-related charges for having lied about his political affiliation to the Prime Minister's Likud party while working at the Public Services Authority. Part of the former businessman's punishment was being barred from serving the state for four years, which expired in June of 2015. Brazil's largest financial newspaper complained that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems committed to controversial selections of his ambassadors. The premier is standing by Shelley, though, calling him a talented polyglot, who speaks several languages. The foreign ministries in both nations say they're looking forward to the restoration of normalized relations. 260 vehicles are going to be placed at different locations for short-term use throughout Tel Aviv. The program even has the easily remembered name Autotel. Mayor Ron Huldai says his city is offering the service on the premise that every shared car means there are about four less private vehicles taking up space, so there's hope this will mean less traffic jams and more places to park. In fact, there's also going to be about 520 parking spots specifically reserved for Autotel drivers. Autotel becomes operational this fall, and it can be used by anyone, including tourists. All you have to do is subscribe to an app for about $13 a month. You'll then be given a smart card that unlocks and turns on the car, which only has to be ordered about a quarter of an hour before it's needed. There's no time limit on how long it can be kept, although users will pay an additional charge for each minute they have the car. Organizers haven't yet set the usage fee, but they're promising it will be really inexpensive and far cheaper than a taxi, no matter what time of day or night that you're out on the town. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras and see you next time with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.